Hi there, I'm going to do a video on Grails 3 with Spring Security, Spring Security REST and Vue.js as the front end technology to interact with all that. Now, in the uh, current examples, Grails have provided a similar thing with the React.js front end. I decided to do a uh, a project on using Vue.js or Spring Security backend to make it work. So, first of all, I think I make this uh, tutorial a bit more informative and explain to probably more beginner what is going on. Someone who doesn't really understand. Uh, we've installed Spring Security on a. Uh, so first of all, we've created a uh, in Grails Three. We've created an application with my app. Uh, or whatever this is called, profile being view, which generates two folders, a server and a client, um, and a settings.gradle. You would typically import the settings.gradle into your IntelliJ, which would give you a client and server. In the server, which is your backend, uh, the Grail server, we have um, some uh, domain classes. So, sorry, before we get there. In the server, we've uh, updated the build.gradle and we've put in some new uh, plugins Spring Security Core, REST, uh, View. Well, View got added in itself by that profile thing. Um, I think there may have been some other views and stuff added to this profile to make it work. It might be on the guide. Um, but anyhow, we've had the Spring Security and we've run the commands to get it to generate the users for Spring Security. It's the de default thing you run to generate it. And when it's generated it, I've just simply um, extended the driver from the user class and I've just added the name to it and added vehicles. And the driver was originally some other project and I've just made it become an extension user. Um, and all these things are, well, the user class itself isn't REST, but the driver is resource URI. So this has become a REST uh, domain class, which means that at this URL uh, on the backend application, it serves the driver domain class through REST using, uh, you know, post, get, push, and all the rest of the rest technologies as such. Um, these are some domain classes that I've just generated as part of the stand start, start of the application. Um, there is a bootstrap and in there it creates some users, some roles, uh, some cars, which we get when we get to the front end, we see some stuff going on and we also get, we get to log in with these users, Susan, parcel them. Um, I've also got some controllers. The controllers aren't really used. I was just messing around with extending the rest of the controller. Now, when you extend or create a, a controller uh, in the Growls world that extends this and then does this sort of thing, what this is saying to it is that this controller actually overtakes what the driver or domain object does and adds this additional stuff to it. Now, if you add additional stuff to it, what you then need to do is you need to map them in in your URL mappings and those typical things will be resources your new URLs will be something more like this that action it binds to so just to give you a heads up because obviously that's another thing to get your head around if you're messing around with custom stuff with rest um, now I think that is all there is to the server. So the server is really, and, and in this demo and in, the, in their demo, the server, all it does is just literally starts up and serves REST as such to uh, for the back end to be able to interact with it. Um, so the client is what I've really been working on, which is a VJS app and to try and make that application do authentication. Um, through the backend's existing technology. So if you assume if you took 
So there's a, I've, I've got another project which is uh, experiments. So I've got another project with experiments and there's a Spring Security React which is their projects here. Um, and the servers are typically no different in the Vue.js world and in the Spring Security React world. All we've really done is the client bit is different in the React world to the Vue.js because they're obviously just different technologies. So, um, and also in the Vue Spring application, I've done this thing here in the source folder. I've added this uh, REST auth, and, uh, auth token JSON renderer, which literally all it appends is the ID of the user, which gets reused in the front end technology to do other things with um, and that uh, that object that file is bound in inside the spring resources that groovy of the server conf over here um, so the front end technologies of this now in in the client folder um, obviously in all these clients that gets generated, whether it's React, Angular, or Vue.js is this one. Uh, there's a package.json which defines what uh, JavaScript libraries that it needs in order to start up this specific uh, version of whatever it is. So in this case, Vue.js. In this Vue.js world, it needs all these dependencies in order to work, and it loads all this stuff in. Um, with the Vue.js world, it's actually supposed to be a lot more easy to do your own things when you can add like jQuery and go into the jQuery world if you wanted to. But in in the source folder of the client, there is a main.js and that's what initiates the Vue application to start up. Um, and typically you'd get something like just this line and this line. And I've added all this stuff in. And there's another one here you can see here, and this is the authentication bit. So Vue Authenticate is the Authenticate plugin for Vue.js. Um, and it does all this. So when um, the front end gets hit, it goes to the router, and the router decides on what needs to happen and what can happen. Um, has these additional meta tags. The meta tags gets um, passed through here, and if the user's got the role for the page, they get it. Otherwise, they get referred to the home page. And if they have um, for each page, it checks local storage, uh, get item view X. Now, I have found this item to be problematic if I've shut the site down, started it up, the browser thinks I've got the session but I don't because the backend don't no, no, no longer has it um, and obviously that turns into the login page or whatever if they've got access or not um, so that's the router and then the login page is in pages login and when it log when it processes the form, um, it sets this store, which is its local. The store is this uh, folder, which has got these user JS files and all for the JS files, and it sets these objects up as it creates them. Um, uh, I haven't really understood this bit yet, but it's a the whole thing is persisted basically. Um, anyhow, in the pages, login sets the objects up, and then for that JSON object that I've just shown you that we've uh, managed to put the ID in, um, it gets the ID and get profile gets called which calls profile service over here services and fetches the profile and puts the profile into the store again as the object that comes back now um, the profile service you can find in the services folder and then you go fetch profile 
calls API, API.get driver ID, which basically does a REST call to the backend, to the driver object, and looks at the ID. API is an instance of Axios, which basically intercepts as it starts and puts the token in that the user's got from the item. Ta -da. Um, and if there's a response, it returns it. Otherwise, it returns it the error to the front end of however, whoever, whatever calls it. Um, now, there's also this garage service, which should be just called generic service because it takes component name or whatever it is and it does whatever it needs to. Um, and it's pretty much the same as that one, but it's bound to whatever calls it. So this gets called in. Um, Components. I know what's happened is pages was from some other project that I started with authentication. Components is what it came with, so these should be reading components. But anyhow, garage dot view. You see garage service being called, which has been imported at the top there, and it then calls those rest methods, which then put the methods in and whatever it needs to call at the time. You can see driver, it's fetching there, it's fetching make there, it's fetching model there, yeah. And there's, it also gets called in table row update vehicle when it updates the vehicle that you are editing. So that's in here. That is what has been changed from what was already provided as a view example, I think, because it was already a view example provided, but it wasn't authentication, it was just standard. So I've just taken that and I've just modified it. So the rest of it was already done. Um, we've started it up, but I wanted to uh, highlight some more things, actually. Before I actually could start the site up, we can start the site up. Do you know what? I mean, did I say at the beginning that the project sits in my home folder and it's, it's here? Rails of Eastman Security Demo. But to start the project up, um, you, you run this, what this command? This command here, boot run parallel. And that starts both sites up, the client and the server. And to access it, you go to 3000. That's not this site, this is a, the React site. Um, I think we're logged in on this one. Yeah. Doesn't matter, but if, if I if I wasn't logged in, um, let me do this. And let's go. Okay, so if I wasn't logged in, it would direct me to. Um, the login page um, and if we watch the login now sends through the name password gets back the token with the ID that I've just shown you that we've modified puts the ID into the profile to get the profile object and what we see here is all these objects now that's been returned through uh, with obviously now taking it and sending it through the API with the token and getting the response back if you enabled um, Spring security debugging, which you can do in the server conf folder uh, logback of the table at the bottom. If you enable these, you'll see tons of logs going through on that application server. Um, but I think I cut it short because I was supposed to say something before I could start these sites up. Um, I should probably put this on the documentation. I had to run this command npm install dash dash save view but before I run that I had to run npm install dash dash save uiv and that was before I could start the sites up because it complained that I had to run these commands before it could continue starting the client up uh, and for that you need obviously npm installed locally to work um, so with that all said with the sites now loaded up and me jumping around all, the, all over the place uh, we can add an entry, which will again go for authentication with the token for the back end. 
and we've got three entries at the moment and we're just about to have a fourth and maybe a fifth and then we can edit the entry and to show you that this is all working and it's not a hoax we'll refresh the page and uh, we've still got that information so basically uh this uh, information is all being sent back with the token every time and uh yeah so that's the difference between what it was originally the original version of it and what i've done now um you can obviously edit and add an entry and you get the profile which shows you the details of the user profile um the logout does not work um you get back this error i'm not sure what's causing that problem i've tried to research it i didn't I couldn't get to the bottom of it uh apparently this says you haven't sent the token but it I, well it has sent the token because it's used the api to do it um i don't know um but beyond that i think that wraps up the video all i was trying to show you is this using uh rest technology with string security doing all the stuff that's going on on the site uh, with a Vue.js front end which I haven't seen much around and it's more to give you a guide on how it's been put together as such. Um, I hope it's made sense, any questions whatever just leave a comment on the video I guess um, but you can find the project and mess around with it on the GitHub site which was here. Okay thanks bye.